Hi, I'm Sachit Mishra, and today I'm going to show you how fast and easy it is to build conversation actions for the Google Assistant using API AI. For this video, I'll build a conversation action that can help me decide what's for dinner. If you're like me, sometimes you want to prepare a meal that fits your particular mood, but you don't feel like going to the grocery store to buy a bunch of ingredients. Instead, you want a recipe that uses the ingredients you have in your home already. The action I build will be able to converse with me in natural language in order to recommend a recipe based on my mood and what ingredients I have on hand. This is the same action that was featured in the earlier Introduction to Conversation Actions video. So check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. Let's go to the API AI tool and I'll show you all the steps to build this from scratch. First, log into API AI and click Create Agent. An API AI agent is a natural language understanding module for your product or service. The term agent in API AI maps to a conversation action. So for the purpose of this video, consider them to mean one and the same. Here, I will name my conversation action Personal Chef. I can give it a little description, like use me to make your next meal, and I'll go ahead and click Save. We're then taken to the Intents screen. Intents and entities are two main concepts important to creating interaction scenarios in API AI. Intents map what a user says to what your conversational experience should do. Notice that our action already has a default fallback intent. This will be triggered when the user says something that isn't recognized. It also has a default welcome intent. This is the main entry point to our conversation, as shown by the fact that it is triggered by the welcome event. Let's get rid of some of these pre-made greetings and specify our own. Maybe something like, Hi, I'm your personal chef. What are you in the mood for? This serves to acknowledge the user and separate our brand from the Google Assistant, as well as direct the user to the next turn in the conversation. Let's go ahead and save this. Before I move on to the next intent, I'll need to create some custom entities. Entities are lists of objects that serve as powerful tools for extracting parameter values from natural language inputs. You will use entities in intents to match dialogue to parameters required in your business logic. In API AI, there are two different types of entities. There are pre-built system entities to handle the most popular common concepts like time, number, address, date, etc. And then there are developer entities, which we'll use here. I'll create developer entities using this web console, but you can also upload them in JSON and CSV formats or through API calls. To get started, Personal Chef should know how to make different types of dishes, so I'll specify them here. We'll call our entity dish type. So some possible dish types could include soup. Soup might also be called broth, so we'll put that in the synonym. Another type of dish could be a salad. Then you might also have an appetizer, and some people might call that a starter. We could have a main, which could also be called a main course or a main dish or even an entree. We have a side, which could also be called a side dish. We can add a row and make a dessert. Some people might call that a sweet. And then we might even have a drink. And another piece of information that you might want when making your meal is what protein you want. So we'll make another entity and call it protein. And we can provide some values like beef. You might also want lamb. Or maybe you even want tofu. And similarly, the user might want to specify some vegetables for their meal. Some possible vegetables could be tomato, onions, maybe some carrots, potatoes, or even broccoli. And to make it a little more interesting, the dish might have a certain temperature, like maybe the user wants some hot food, or they might call that boiling, or they might just want something warm, or maybe they want something cold, or even freezing. And finally, they might want to specify how much time they have to cook. So maybe they want something quick. They want it fast, or now, or right now. Or maybe they want something slow cooked. So when you're all done, you'll have a finished list of entities, something like what I have here. Next, I'll create an intent for the use case that our conversation action will support, recipe recommendation. Let's create the intent and we'll call it recipe-recommendation. Next, we'll need to add a few examples of how people might ask for suggestions. So they might say something pretty simple, like, what can I do with potatoes and lamb? Or they might say something a little more complicated, like, it's really cold outside. What do you suggest to help me warm up? As I'm adding new examples, you can see how they're automatically annotated to the right entities. 
we can change the annotation so that the names of the parameters and the entities fit our use case. So for instance here, cold actually doesn't relate to the temperature of our food. And also, the temperature one parameter can be renamed to just temperature. Personal Chef will learn from the annotated examples and entities to understand more variations of such requests. Let's go ahead and add a few more examples of what the user might say to trigger this intent, to help Personal Chef learn. The user might say something like, do you have a recipe for a quick hot soup? Do you know a recipe for a quick meal? Or something like, I'd like a cold dessert and I want it right now. Here, I'll assign the action for this intent. We'll call it recipe.recommendation, and it'll be the trigger for my business logic to get the relevant response. As a side note, be aware that actions on API AI have a different meaning than actions on Google. Again, we can see how the parameters are filled in automatically from the annotated examples. Personal Chef won't be able to get recommendations to the user without having certain parameters filled. I'm going to mark those parameters as required, and I'm going to add some prompts for each of them. Personal Chef will use these prompts to request the missing information from the user. You can add more than one of these prompts for each parameter to add variation. So for vegetable, for instance, we might prompt the user with, what kind of vegetables do you have? For their protein, perhaps something like, all right, what protein would you like to use? And similarly, for dish type, we might say something like, what kind of dish do you prefer? I'll also specify that protein and vegetable are list parameters, since the user might want more than one in the dish. And let's change the order in which Personal Chef will request the information so that it asks for protein first. Now I can set my text response to pull in the required entities that return the recommended recipe. Maybe something like, I think you should try the protein vegetable dish type recipe I found on example.com. I've used the text response field to add a dummy response just for testing purposes. The syntax shown in the value column of my parameters can be used to refer to the collected parameter value. When I connect Personal Chef to my business logic, it will be able to use the information from the parameters to get proper recipes. Now let's test how Personal Chef works. For the initial tests, I'll use the test console here. Let's say something like, it's cold outside. I need a hot soup to warm me up. Doesn't look like it worked. Why not? Well, you gotta hit save on your intent to make sure that API AI learns from the information you've entered. Now let's try it again. So it understands this phrase even if I haven't added it as an example. Now it's asking me what protein I'd like to use because I haven't provided this information yet. Let's go ahead and respond. I have some beef. Now it's going to ask me what kind of vegetables I have, and I can say tomatoes, onions, and carrots. In my response, I've provided information for all parameters, protein, vegetables, and dish type. All of these required parameters are filled, and so Personal Chef gets back to me with the dummy response I wrote in the intent. Before we move on, let's turn off the small talk domain. Personal Chef really only has one purpose here. So what if Personal Chef gets something wrong? I can review the conversations it had with my users in the training section over here. If we match some user requests to the wrong intent or some information hasn't been extracted properly, I can fix it right here. As an example, let's try saying this. Chicken sounds good to me. It seems like this phrase hasn't been matched at all. So I'll go into the training and I'll assign it to my recipe recommendation intent. And I'll specify that chicken matches to the protein entity. Now I click approve and in a few seconds, API AI learns. And if we go back to the protein entity, we'll see chicken listed. So let's test this out. Let's say something like, I need to prepare a meal and I have a lot of chicken in my fridge. Now it recognizes that I want to cook with chicken as my protein and it asks what kind of vegetables I have. So our current response is hard-coded, but we can add a dynamic response with fulfillment. When an intent is matched, the fulfillment webhook is called with the JSON payload shown here. This includes the intent ID, action name, associated parameters, and other information that may be relevant to the business logic. To make Personal Chef respond with actual recommendations, I can connect it to my business logic using this webhook. I can provide the link to my webhook service here. 
the webhook will bring the response from my service. I'm quite happy with Personal Chef the way it is now. Let's see how I can connect it to the Google Assistant. I'll use the API AI one-click integration to turn on actions on Google. I need to first add a unique invocation name that I'll use to call my action during testing. In this case, Personal Chef. Notice that my welcome intent is already chosen based on the welcome event that was set earlier. When I hit preview, Personal Chef will be available on both the web simulator and on a Google Home device with the same Google account as the one I authorized here. So let's try it out on the simulator. You'll need to log in and then invoke your action. Let's say, talk to Personal Chef. Sure, here's Personal Chef. Hi, I'm your Personal Chef. What are you in the mood for? So it gives us our response, and we can say something like, I have some chicken. What kind of vegetables do you have? And then let's say we change our mind. Actually, I only have ground beef. What kind of vegetables do you have? Notice that the protein parameter was changed retroactively, and it'll ask for vegetables again. So let's say we have some tomatoes, onions, and carrots. Remember, Personal Chef took a list of vegetables because we marked it as a list parameter. What kind of dish do you prefer? Let's say I just want a side. I think you try the beef, tomato, onion, and carrot side recipe I found on example.com. It works. Now I'm ready to deploy. But before I do that, I'd want to make sure to fill out my business logic and do some more testing and training. But once all that's done, to deploy Personal Chef, I'll need a project ID. This can be found in your Google Cloud Projects homepage. So let's go ahead and head over to the Google Cloud Project Dev Console. We'll create a project. We'll just call this one Personal Chef and hit Create. We'll need to wait for a bit while the Dev Console creates the project. Great, now your project is created and we can actually see the project ID down here. Let's go ahead and copy the project ID back into our API AI console. Next, in your Google Cloud project, you're going to need to enable the Actions API. To do that, head over to the API Manager and click Enable API. There, search for the Actions API. Go ahead and click Enable. Now you'll see an entry for directory listing. Here you're going to define things like your invocation name and description and provide Google with some image assets. So in our invocation name, we'll type personal chef because that's what the user will say to invoke the action. For the action introduction, we'll complete the sentence. For the display name, let's go ahead and use personal chef. And now let's add a short description, something like choose a recipe for your next meal based on ingredients you already have. And then in our full description, we'll provide something like personal chef will provide you with a recipe for a meal based on the ingredients you already have in your fridge or pantry. You can specify what kind of dish you want or even what temperature you want the food at. Personal Chef is your go-to guide in the kitchen. For the sample invocation, we really only have one way to invoke our action because it's pretty simple. It'll just be, okay Google, talk to Personal Chef. We'll also specify the category as food and drink. Down here, you can specify some images that you'd like to use for your banner or your logo. Finally, make sure to enter your email. All of this information will be used by Google and by our user to figure out what your action can do. Once you've registered, just return to API AI and click Deploy. Back in my Google Cloud Project Developer Console, if I click over to Deployment History, I can see the review status of my conversation actions. Once a conversation action is approved, its status will switch to Deployed and you'll be good to go. At this point, once it's been approved, the action is made available to anyone using the Google Assistant. Remember, you can always test before approval with your own device as long as it is linked to your developer account. Let's try it now. Okay, Google, talk to Personal Chef. Sure, here's Personal Chef. Hi, I'm your Personal Chef. What are you in the mood for? I'd like something to warm me up, like a hot soup, and I want it fast. All right, what protein would you like to use? I have some ground beef. What kind of vegetables do you have? I think I have some tomatoes and onions. I think you should try the beef, tomato and onion soup recipe I found on example.com. So that is a really quick demo of some of the powerful features available in the API AI developer tools. 
You can find out more about Actions on Google by reading the documentation at developers.google.com actions. We also have an Actions on Google Google Plus community, so you can ask questions and share your ideas with everyone. We look forward to seeing what you build.